Inflation. Every rally in this bubble boom back to 87 has been eclipsed by rising inflation and in Fed rate um, hikes and therefore rising treasury bond rates. 10 year rates going up three points into the 87 crash and bam, 40% in two weeks. 2000 crash only, only went up, you know, one and, one and a half points, you know, enough to tip it down. Uh, similarly 2008 I'm talking about, I'm sorry. Uh, into the biggest crash we've had yet. And now we're going from about half a percent up to 1.75% recently. We pulled back here, which is the reason stocks are running. I said, look, if, if interest rates go sideways, stocks will run, but if they keep marching up, and I think they're gonna march up into late this year into about 2%, maybe 2.2%, that could well be enough to trip this whole crash and that next crash always predicts lower, okay? Megaphone pattern, higher highs, lower lows, best projection again, 2,000 on the S&P 500 from 47.25 or 48.20, somewhere in this range. So again, time to wake up, time to get serious about changing your portfolio strategies. Be out of stocks just for 2002 or just for this next few months, you know? If we get through 2002, and we don't see more than a 20% correction, it looks like business as usual and no recession, then then maybe the the, the, the central banks have created a Nirvana, never, never land, okay? Uh, that will never happen, but if so, then I would capitulate on that. And finally, China. I always talk, China is the lead bubble, and China has been the one weakening the most. It's 8% recent growth down to 2% that I've seen. It's, it's their economies going down fast. But here's the big thing, home sales in China finally dropped recently, 18.7%. And home prices flattened out, went down slightly. First time in years and years. This is the ultimate side. China's the lead bubble. Its bubble is primarily in real estate, which is always the worst for debt and foreclosures and bank failures and all of this sort of stuff. We've already seen Evergrande get in trouble. And just like every time, some major bank or, or company gets in big trouble and people say, well, we'll bail it out, it'll be okay. No, it's just the sign that a lot of companies are in trouble. So I say, really look at your portfolio. If you're gonna sell stocks, I think, especially if we go up a little farther near 47, 25 tomorrow, I would be a seller tomorrow and say, you know, if I lose 2% in December, what's the big deal when the most likely next downside is 55% or more. And ultimately in the crash, 85 to 90%. That's what these lifetime crashes are. And there's no reason this won't be this. The only difference in this crash in 1929 to 32 crash is this bubble's been pushed farther, longer to more extremes in all asset categories. Real estate wasn't even in a significant bubble in the roaring 20s because you couldn't buy a house without five year mortgage and 50% down payment. How do you get a bubble off of that? We seem to be coming into another very critical point where we could see a top. I don't mean a short-term top, but a top top in this whole bull market, uh, back to 2009 low, back to even 82 lows if you look back. The greatest uh, bubble, greatest bull market, the longest bull market in history since 82. If you count it in nominal terms, not adjusted for inflation, all the way back to late 74. And the longest segment, the long longest bull market within a bull market, now going on 12.4 years, okay? Even the, the big run into 2000 from late 90, which was like, you know, just a little over 10. So, so this, you know, we're breaking all the records, we're pushing this. All of my cycles would have called for a top and, and, you know, after the big 2007 top, the next one would have been late 2019, early 2020, and we're pushing beyond that. So all this stimulus keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. But the downside is huge, 55% if we top here. If we keep going up this channel, which, and, and I'm gonna show that uh, to, uh, to subscribers in an update tomorrow, okay? A new revised channel after the first one broke, same, top trend line, but different bottom trend line, says we're gonna 47.25, 
right in the next day or two uh, into, say, Monday around and 4820 if we make it to the latest, most extended time I see for this rally into late December. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So, big crash if that happens. 55% of it happens from here, 58%. Just to get back down to the 2009 low. And I've also shown in my newsletters in recent months, the best target, when I really look at all the technical indicators and patterns, is a little lower, 2,000. That's down 58 to 59%. So again, we've never, if this happens, and this looks like the most likely uh, path, either now or early next year, if we keep drifting up into December, we will never, path haven't, and probably never in the future see this big a crash in particularly the first crash of a bubble, and secondly, in one year. If we go up into December to that 4820 target, then we will be seeing not only the first wave down, 50 some percent plus, but probably the, the next big wave down as well in one year and maybe see 80% of an entire 80 to 90% crash of a lifetime within one year, 2002. So we're setting all types of records and we will continue to. Now, what's the reason I think this is more imminent? Uh, yes, we're at the top of that channel again, okay? It didn't look like we'd get there this fast, not too long ago. We are 1% from it, and then we could either back off, we're, we're backing off a little bit today, Thursday, after getting within 1% uh, near the close, but we, we could either go sideways for a while and go up in December, like I said, or we could hit this number and, and top literally tomorrow, and that would be the best day for this to happen. But we're also seeing important signs in the economy. I've been preaching for a long time. You keep stimulating, overstimulating an economy beyond its normal natural means. Uh, stimulus always works in the short term, doesn't matter if it's coffee, dexedrine, alcohol, heroin, crack. It all works, but the more you do it, the less returns you get and the more pain and consequences and toxicity and all this sort of stuff. And we're showing signs of that. So we've seen the biggest by far, I've shown recently, 4.7 trillion, just in money printing, not counting all the new fiscal stimulus, just since COVID in a little over a year and a half, compared to 3.6 trillion in the entire 2009 through 2012 long recovery, only on stimulus. So this is exponential, but we're getting diminishing returns off the charts, okay? So we just had 6.7% second quarter GDP. That was the height of the rebound, okay? Just, just a year after the crash bottom, a little over a year, okay? Here with third quarter, the recent estimates, you know, after 2%, and it may come in lower than that. I've seen 0.2% for the latest month as an estimate, okay? So we are decelerating fast after the greatest stimulus program in history. That much stimulus only lasts that long, that's called diminishing returns and it should continue. But again, remember, all the way back to the 1980s, if you look back at my newsletter and book, I've always been forecasting late 2022 in the longer term, 90, 45, and 80 and 40 year cycles, the most important big ones, all come together only once since they all started, okay? only once in late 2022. So I think this is gonna be compressed into late 2021, 22 crash, and it will linger into 2023, but I think we're looking at most of the damage. Remember, first crash projections are 55% or more. First year could be 60, 70% down, and the whole thing could be 80 to 90. So this is not a time to be complacent. And, and I, I just give an example right now, okay. Let's say we, you know, we hit 47.25 tomorrow, and we're close to that anyway. You sell there, and it dribbles up to 48.20, okay, into December, you know, in a, in a month and a half. You've missed 2%. What happens if instead we hit 47.25, and we quickly go into that 50, 55% crash with two, 2.3 months on typical for the first crash, okay, out of a bubble like this? So that's what we're looking at here. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made 
over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin. It went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.